their maneuvers to get up there. Gemini 7, which has been having trouble with uh, one of the stacks in its fuel cells. Roger, what was your current on it before you took it off? About five and a half stacks. is 10 to five and a half. There are six stacks Roger available. Seven. One is enough uh, for flight. One of the uh, six stacks has uh, been running erratically, and they've now turned it off, as you just heard. Should not affect the mission or the safety of Gemini 7 in any way. Test pilots are pretty cool cookies while they're there, just 20 feet apart. Gemini uh, 7 and 6, would you continue with the description of your station keeping? 7 uh, managed to get uh, that information out on the fuel cell. Right now, uh, 6 is about 10 feet above and to the left of 7. Uh, uh, we're just flying a nose-to-nose, -nose, approximately 15 feet apart. Roger. Can, uh, very clearly see the right scanners operating. Roger, Jim. Gemini 7, are you able to see in the windows of 6 very easily and vice versa? Roger, 7, yes. may be a little busy up there, but they're certainly not, uh, well, there's no Graham McNamee in space today, not giving us a uh, play-by-play -play exactly, which is understandable. Chiraw undoubtedly is pretty busy, and uh, Lovell as well, uh, 
Rollin Stafford in six, Lovell and Borman in seven. Their picture taking. Uh, they want to get uh, all the pictures they can of this historic meeting. And obviously, they don't want to spend a lot of time talking about it yet. They'll have a lot to say later on. They're barely a couple of man lengths apart there. Well, yeah, I figured right on the purpose of firing out about 40 feet, so what would you We can't tell now, we're in too close, but if a pure ninja breaking maneuver, we just hit uh, quite a bit out. simulation just about what Shira has seen out of his command pilot's window in six. His transmissions are a little bit hard to read, but uh, the historic nature of this flight is well worth hanging in there for the words we can gather. 786, did I understand your report that thruster plumes were seen 40 feet out? I was 787 and I'm sure they saw that far. They could see them. I could have been a hose down with them. I think we just put on a braking maneuver on lateral thrusters fire uh, quite a ways out. Roger, 7. Apparently, uh, the scientists back there at Mission Control didn't think the thruster plumes could be seen that far, 40 feet from Texas the remote, spacecraft. Texas remote, Bahamas local. Texas remote, Bahamas low. The business of Guaymas local, Texas remote is the passing of control uh, of the primary communications from one space, from one uh, tracking center to the other. Texas, Corpus Christi is now relaying the uh, communication to master, to mission control. 787, Houston. Houston. We plan to put 2C back on the line at the RKV. Okay. It's approximately 20 minutes off the line. RKV is Rose Knot Victor. It's the tracking station uh, out in the Atlantic. At 2C is the is the stack C, third stack, in the second section of the fuel cell, which has been turned off. It's been a little erratic. 77, Houston, could you give us a readout on your stack currents? Yeah. Houston's now in direct control of the station. Roger, copy 31.2. The two spacecraft. That's very good, Seven. Uh, you might keep an eye on that two Charlie voltage and see if you can see it jump up like it did yesterday. Roger. Two spacecraft. 77, would you switch your adapter C band to continuous? Would you switch your adapter C-band to command? Houston. On that update at Hawaii, those remarks 
uh, pass at Hawaii Rev 4 and Rev 5 actually do not apply to you. Those were instructions to Hawaii. Spacecraft are now over the Central American Isthmus. They'll cross down over northern South America on this pass. They're in communication directly with Houston now. We're we'll passing out of the signal area of Houston in just a moment or two, perhaps already have. We haven't had any confirmation yet that uh, Gemini 6 has begun its in-plane fly around. That is uh, circling of Gemini 7. The amount of fuel it has on board after all of the maneuvers to achieve this fabulous, historic, first in space, this rendezvous, uh, that it has just about the amount of fuel Houston, expected. Uh, we are now out of touch with those two spacecraft as they swing down the west coast of uh, Central America, beginning a pass across South America. The Rosenat Victor should raise them next. You heard the last transmission that they were running somewhere between six and ten feet apart, and apparently in uh, good style, good comfort. The one can certainly uh, almost sense the feeling of uh, achievement evident in this room and in uh, the back rooms which have supported this mission. You have to go back to the Alan Shepard flight, at least in my memory, to recall a time when all of the flight controllers were standing at their consoles at the moment of... Uh, when this rendezvous occurred and when we got that first report. There's a lot of handshaking going on in the room now. Dr. Gilruth has come in, is congratulating Chris Kraft. Dr. Shea, the head of the Apollo program, has come in the room. At uh, six hours and 21 minutes into the flight, this is Gemini Control at Houston. And so this historic rendezvous has been achieved. Dr. Robert Gilruth, the head of the Manned Space Center, as you heard from Paul Heaney, is down there congratulating the men who put this flight together and have shepherded this flight along since, uh, as a matter of fact, the first Mercury program, our first men in space. And we can assume that Chris Kraft, the flight director, the young flight director who is the head man down there in flight control, has lighted up uh, that long green cigar. Uh, they asked uh, earlier from uh, Australia when he in anticipated doing that and he told them and the men in the spacecraft that he was going to light up the long green at uh, six hours into the flight meaning after rendezvous we can assume that uh, that stogie is puffing away uh, even at this moment in mission control perhaps someday they're going to uh, let our live television cameras in mission control at houston and we can see the excitement uh, there in the space flights so far the uh, nasa people have ruled against that for fear that any cameras in the room uh, covering live at any rate uh, might uh, upset uh, these men behind their consoles and they don't want to do that of course that's their judgment uh, certainly doesn't happen to be ours but right now the spacecraft six to ten feet apart and uh, the next time we hear from them it may be that they have begun their in-plane maneuver the the fly around of gemini 7 by gemini 6. up to now in the gemini program astronauts have proved that a spacecraft can be maneuvered from one orbit to another and that men can spend at least eight days in a weightless condition. And during a recent interview, Wally Shira talked about what he and Tom Stafford hoped to prove during their part of this dual flight. We, of course, have succeeded in proving man is capable of the duration required for a lunar mission with Gordon Cooper and Pete Conrad. Now it is up to Tom Stafford and me to prove that we can rendezvous with another object in space. This on the lunar mission would be the lunar excursion module that two astronauts would land on the moon with, lifting off the moon and rendezvousing with the command module that put them in lunar orbit in the first place. With these two steps completed, we are well on the way to what we feel is our national goal of accomplishing a lunar landing and return to Earth where we would like to land. 